Hi guys, it's NST, Never Stop Traveling. Do you guys want to know how to travel for two months for as cheap as traveling for two weeks? Well, today we're going to go over just that. It's crazy how little you need to know about something before you do it. I mean, like, a lot of people say, oh, I have to learn all this knowledge about this thing before you can try it. But really the best way to learn how to do something is practice. So go out there and do it. I mean, like, I didn't really know how to travel before I started traveling, but I went out and did it and I got some practice and now I feel more comfortable traveling. I can be like, oh, I have four days off. Let me do a, a weekend trip to here or like a, a long weekend here, whatever it is. Oftentimes when you start, you might spend, I don't know, like on a two week trip. A lot of people, at least in the States, they'll take two weeks off a year and they might travel for those two weeks and they might spend two grand or more. I mean, easily the people can spend more than 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 uh, on a few weeks of travel. And like, oh, I can't travel till after I pay off my loans or after I, I you know, I, I have a, a steady job and I have all this money and whatnot. But in reality, you really don't need that much. I think I've done, I did a trip to like a four country trip for is a week or so and I did it for under a thousand. I want to say it was like 900 or so. I don't have the the budget. I didn't write one out for that. I just went to cheaper countries and I it was only it was a short trip but my biggest expense on that trip was the flight to and from the country and that's that's a big big thing when it comes to traveling is one of your biggest expenses will be your flight to and from the country but if you travel for say two months and you're going from the US to Europe or the US to South America or Africa or Asia and you stay in a country for those two months versus two weeks that maybe thousand dollar flight or six hundred dollar flight whatever it is it will only cost you you know six hundred dollars for your flight for that for two months versus you know two weeks so it's the same price either way it's just you're able to stay in that place longer now how can you travel for say two months for two thousand dollars versus traveling for two weeks for two thousand dollars well we're gonna go over comparing maybe southeast asia and seattle chicago to seattle and get a flight for around 230 dollars that's not that much compared to getting a flight from chicago to bali indonesia much further away way over in southeast asia but i found a flight from chicago to bali indonesia for only 730 dollars So that is almost three times or two times a little bit more than your flight from Chicago back from uh, to Seattle. But uh, we're going to go over some of the other expenses on, on the trip. For a two week trip in Seattle, you could easily spend $100 per night, um, maybe even twice as much. But let's just say you spend $100 per night in Seattle on your trip. $100 per night for two weeks, that's about $1,400. Out of $2,000, that's a big chunk of your budget. Is already taking on you know your hotel and your transportation or your flight to and from that that already adds up to you know over six hundred sixteen hundred dollars and you only have a few hundred dollars left let's say your hotel has free breakfast well you might be in luck but let's see let's see how much further it'll stretch in bali indonesia you could easily get a place to stay from you know five to ten dollars a night and if you're there for two months you know five dollars a night that's only 150 a month that's you know 300 300 for two months so anywhere from maybe 300 for those two months to 600 versus your 1400 in just two weeks in Seattle that's crazy it's drastically lower for a longer period of time now let's just say in Seattle you only spend $20 a day for food and everything else you do is free which you could easily spend a lot more on different things or different food but only $20 a day which is pretty minimalistic $20 a day for 14 days, that's $280. So just only spending $20 a day in Seattle, and if you live in North America, you know, you could easily spend $50, $100 a day on food. But let's just say you only spend $20 a day, that's $280. Versus in Bali, Indonesia, you could probably get away with only spending $2 a day on food. I mean, $2 a day on food, that's nothing. But let's just say you spend a little bit more, you you eat a little bit nicer, so you spend $5 a day on food, well that's only $300 or $180 for a month. $300 for, or your money goes drastically further in Bali, Indonesia. 
So for about the same as you'd spend on barely eating in Seattle, you can eat a lot more and a lot nicer food in Bali, Indonesia for less. Now that comes out to $1,910 in Seattle and only $1,630 in Bali, Indonesia. If your budget was only $2,000 in Bali, Indonesia, you'd still have about $370 for maybe renting a scooter, renting surfboards, you know, doing tours or different things or spending more money on your food or buying a lot of souvenirs, but you can get really cheap souvenirs in Bali, Indonesia, high quality products or decent products for a lot less than you'd spend in the States. Now for Seattle, if you spend $1,910 just on minimalistic food, hotels and, and transportation, flight and tune from the, the area, you, you only have about $90 left for maybe a souvenir or two, a few souvenirs or whatnot, maybe spending a little bit more on your food. And it doesn't really give you that much leeway. For $2,000, you're able to spend two weeks in Seattle versus spending much less than $2,000 in Bali, Indonesia for two months, including your flight, including your lodging, your food, you know, maybe some renting some surfboards or some scooters or getting doing some tours. That's, that's what I try to tell people when it comes to traveling. I recommend traveling for longer periods of time. And if you have a summer off, if you're a high school student or a college student, you're just graduating high school, or you're in a break between, maybe you take an off year, you saved up some money that you did because you worked you know, extra, extra time in high school or jobs you've had when in school. If you want to really get a lot of experience and see a lot of the world, just explore, be yourself and adventure, you can do it for a very reasonable price, reasonable price. Now, let's say that you doubled your time in Bali, Indonesia, and you were there for four months, your flight's still gonna cost you, you know, $730 there and back, but the, the lodging food and everything that you spent on, you know, $900 for two months, that's about, you know, $450 per month, it would cost you still less than $3,000 to hang out, in Bali, Indonesia for four months, or three months, if you're on a break between you know, your spring and fall semester. And if you go to you know, different places in Southeast Asia, you could probably get away with traveling for the same amount for a few months throughout Southeast Asia, you wouldn't be breaking the bank. It's, it's just amazing you know, what you can do in Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe, South America, Central America, Africa, um, most of the world, how far your money can go if you're a Westerner, if you're from North America, Australia, you know, Western Europe. It's just your money goes further, you can travel longer, and even if you're from other places, you can travel for longer versus maybe traveling a week in a Western country in your country, or you can still travel for less. So when it comes to planning for all these things, um, I'm, I'm just talking about your budget for planning for this and how you would plan to um, you know, where you want to go. I just recommend looking up on different sites, Hostel World, uh, Airbnb, you know, Rome to Rio, you can find out transportation and stuff. You can just, like when I'm bored or I have free time, I'm just like, a lot of the time, I'm literally just on my computer, my phone, and I'm searching different cities around the world. You know, I'm looking at Cambodia, I'm looking at China, I'm looking at Argentina, Peru, you know, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, I'm looking at all these countries, I'm checking out, oh, how much is it for a hostel? Oh, $5 here? Oh, $2 here? $20 here? Okay, and I'm looking at transportation. You know, how much is it to get a, a taxi from point A to point B for a half an hour ride or this or that? It's just a fun hobby to, in your free time, you can research different places around the world, how much it costs to travel in those places. You can plan all these little mock trips and then say you have a summer off or you have some extra time, you already have that knowledge and you know, okay, how I'm gonna be able to travel in these countries and you feel more comfortable and confident being able to do something like that. Anyway, guys, I hope this really helps. Um, I enjoy, enjoy making these videos. I hope you guys enjoy watching them. I really hope they're helpful. If they are, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. Um, and if you guys got any other ideas for videos I can make, just let me know. Um, otherwise, guys, peace out. Much love. Take care.